Okay, day two, game on summer. Um, this is about, it's at lunchtime right now, a little after lunchtime maybe. Here's Red Storm set up, the expansion. Baltic approaches. It's like a bunch of tanks and jeeps and stuff on the ground. So it's an air combat game, as far as I am aware. And uh, it's like a lot of ground ground-born targets. I see there's an F4 Phantom reference sheet here. It looks like some smaller maps on the side that you use to like plot your courses and what have you. Whiteboard markers. Pretty cool. Uh, we got a little, got some Gallipoli info yesterday. This is obviously a game from GMT. Jeff was showing us, we're talking about the history of the Gallipoli landings. I really love the map of this game. It's really cool. The Mons 2.0 rules are going to apply to Gallipoli as well. Back, backwards compatible when it comes out. Speaking of Mons, plenty of playtesting happening. Huge engagement. We'll see us still going. Oh, it looks like there's been some movement. Looks like the axes have advanced a little bit. Yeah, it, yeah, deep into the desert. Nice. Salerno's still set up. Not sure if they've played any more turns. Let's see. Uh, they are. Oh, turn six. Looks like it's moving a little bit slowly. So what does that give you? Brian Baru over there. Area control trick taking. Like two uh, you guys are animals. So I'm going to activate one and this is a movement. Still can't attack So They set it up again for another game after doing some things wrong. It's the third game of Pads of Glory they played. They're on turn two. They've just started. Here looks some Outer Rim, a game that I really would like to play. It's very dynamic, it changes. I think it's just the mechanical one. I mean, if you end up with five camels stacked on the same stack. This is a three dimensional oh, yeah. pyramid. Yeah, that can oh, cool. definitely happen. This camels. is totally legit, right? <laughs> the Tower of and Camels. And if blue, which is in first, would go here, then they would then go back to the bottom. <laughs> so they are now in last place. Oh, uh, it's Camel Up yep. Super Cup. So, I think it's a camel racing game. Yeah, so it's it's it. yeah, there it is, Camel Up. <laughs> Literally. Thanksgiving dinner. That was Wouldn't be a game convention without Ed Beach's CDGs. Yeah, here I stand. No, you're second or third to last. Turn three. Okay. He, once he gets his spot up, he'll jump up a point. But, um, wasn't that about a turn early for the new rule to be wiped out like that? It's about a turn. Looks like the Spanish so, have done pretty well against the Ottomans. Oh, yeah, Calvin. All okay. right, so. Uh, all right, and over here we are playing the Battle of Denowitz from Four Lost Battles, uh, Library of Napoleonic Battles. And uh, we're using the counter sleds, we're using the, the cards. First time I've played this system with the cards. Um, you're going to see some videos on this game coming shortly to the channel as I've done a bunch of playthroughs solo of some of the other scenarios. This is the final one I haven't played. Happy to get it face to face. Uh, the fog of war aspect is really cool with the counter sleds. Um, you can see kind of what's happening here. The the French started the, this game coming up this road, uh, trying to get off the north edge of the map. The the Prussians from two sides kind of converged, and we had some French reinforcements come on. And we've been in exchanging fire and attacks outside of Denowitz. The battle kind of started over here and has shifted southwest, and so we are in the 3 p.m. turn of, what is this, the sixth turn, seventh turn of uh, a nine-turn game. It moves pretty quick. A lot of us have been rolling out of command, so a lot of our leaders haven't been able to do anything, but you can see that the map looks really nice, and uh, it's pretty pretty fun so far. It's a first play. Uh, I'm teaching it, and uh, it's a first play face-to-face uh, -face for me as well, so... That is a wrap on the Battle of Denowitz uh, that we just finished. You'll notice that this looks a lot different than what I last showed you, and that's because uh, on the second to last turn of the game, we only played the first day of battle, by the way. The Battle of Denowitz could go a second day if you play the right card. So we're playing with the cards. Um, I got a general retreat card, which allowed me on the second to last turn to disengage from the coalition player. We had Von Bulow's core in here. Um, we had, uh, what is this, the Prussian Prussian 4th Corps in here. Um, I had the uh, Arigi's uh, cavalry up in this area, and then I had withdrawn the 4th Corps um, uh, as Mortier's guard came in. And that was, again, this is a non-historical reinforcement. Mortier, um, I got the uh, additional reinforcements card. He marched down this road, and he sort of relieved, um, who was that? That would have been, who's the leader? Uh, that would have been... No, that's not it. 
Anyways, I forget what the leader's name was up here. <laughs> Oh, Bertrand. Bertrand's fourth. So Bertrand's fourth. There was, there was a lot of... The, the early game was focused around the town of Denowitz. You know, Bertrand's column is on this road. We got Prussians coming this way. We got Prussians coming this way. And so we had some, some skirmishing to the west of the town. Um, eventually, that, eventually, as Arigi um, arrived from this direction with his cavalry and swept down this way, it forced the... Uh, Prussians, uh, Prussian fourth back a little bit, and it sort of secured the town of Denowitz for the French. Um, and then uh, there was some back and forth. Von Bulow was putting some really mean losses, actually, you can see here on uh, the French fourth. Here, here, we lost uh, another permanent loss here. Um, so it, there's a lot of casualties happening. Pulled back. Um, Arigi charged down the flank. We had uh, Mortier show up with the young guard. They didn't actually have to get engaged. They showed up, and at that point, Von Bulow was dealing with uh, Udino, who had come from this direction from the French. And so there was kind of battles in this sort of like choppy terrain. We couldn't get really any good artillery sight lines. I did have a unit up on this hill that got to take a couple of shots. But really, a lot of the action was down here in the clear, uh, where Renier, who came out on this road, uh, came out to Seehausen. He actually picked off these two Prussians who were operating alone without any backup north of the town. He got fully surrounded, eliminated. And that um, ultimately saved me quite a bit because it gave me a lot of victory points. Um, and then at, right after that happened, we had Bernadotte and the Swedes show up, as you can see, all, and the Russians as well. Um, here's, here's the Swedes. The Swedes were in column kind of late in the game. Yeah, there's Bernadotte. So the Swedes were coming in on sort of the final turn. You know, if we had played a second day, obviously the Swedes would have been an important part of the battle. I would not have played the general retreat to back off. And, um, and uh, yeah, so the Russians came in, and the Russians came in to cut Renier off. I got the uh, general retreat, came off the map, scored some points. I actually rescued most of Arigi's cavalry. I got parts of the 7th uh, off of the map as well, um, and baggage trains. And importantly, I captured a Prussian, the Prussian 4th Corps baggage train over here with a, a daring cavalry raid and attack. Um, so all in all, it was really good fine. We played with the cards. I'm not sure I would play with the cards in general. I think really what the cards are for is for mixing up established scenarios that you know historically how they play. So if you're not finding the historical value, like if you've played the historical situation a whole bunch and you want some kind of like twists, this is really what the cards are for. They add some fog of war elements that kind of tweak some things. Things. They don't really integrate with the rules super tightly, so there's some question marks, and uh, they operate kind of weirdly. So I don't know that I would play with the cards all the time, but um, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, we got through 11 turns in about, f I don't know, six hours maybe? Something like that? Yeah, six yeah, hours. Six hours. So um, there's some other stuff that happens. We didn't get to do the night turns. Obviously, you can score points there if you have leaders in uh, towns uh, and what have you. And then we, there was a possible whole second day that could have gone on, the Swedes with Bernadotte. I think uh, had we gone and played the second day, I think probably the coalition would have won. They had a lot of Russian players or Russian units here. The Swedes coming up. You know, the young guard had just taken position here uh, below Rohrbeck and, um, and they had a lot of damaged units in the rear. So uh, I think it would have been probably to the coalition's advantage. Von Bulow's Prussians are just super devastating. Um, but there you go. That's the Battle of Denowitz, Library of Napoleonic Battles. And I have now played all four lost battles <laughs> of, uh, of this particular game. And uh, after this, I think we might move on to Leipzig uh, to play the huge three-mapper.